but I will never ever forget Wednesday and walking out to PMQs and I actually said at the time I felt as if I was walking out of the of the crematorium about to pay my respects to the bereaved families. Did you have any inkling that that was going to happen? Oh gosh no I mean it's fair to say we've we've been dealing with difficult situation for months, frankly, haven't we? And to be honest, it goes back to the Owen Patterson votes, mm. uh, but then you had parties and and all, and all the rest after that. But this week we reached a, a new place, really, because the issues around the appointment of Chris Pincher, where you know, it was an open secret uh, that that Chris had had been guilty of predatory behaviour and frankly to appoint someone for to a job that is responsible for welfare of MPs was a provocative act if you knew he was guilty of that but you know we can't be sure what anyone knows about anyone else but once the evidence had been brought into public domain by Sir Simon MacDonald there was only one outcome uh, really and you know obviously it was Sajid who was the first to jump Jackie, uh, to be honest, many of us have expected the cabinet to do something about it earlier, if truth be known. Jackie, having been in the Whip's office, were you? Uh, you say it's an open secret, but were were you aware of it? Were, were, uh, had other people talked about it? Why was it tolerated? I think everybody in Westminster had heard something. I'm sure right. Carolyn would substantiate that. But you know, those of us who believe in natural justice can't do anything about something we haven't witnessed. Right. So, so it was all hearsay, but there were sufficient people who did uh, know. But and and you know there were. I mean, to be frank, you know, I have served as a whip, and I've seen how the whip's office has become, and really, it's not behaving right. It's become more about enforcement and intimidation rather than about getting the job done. And and I really hope that whatever happens going forward, in terms of leadership. That will change. We'll go back to having good professional standards of behaviour from that office. Why do you think that WIP's office has turned into an enforcer's office, if you like? Because I remember hearing about WIP's that not only are they there to enforce, but the word pastoral care came in to the yeah. conversation. And I thought, gosh, I've never associated WIP's with any sort of pastoral care. My impression of WIP's is basically putting people up against the wall in corridors and saying, do what you're told, or the stuff that you need in your constituency are never going to happen. Well, that's what you see of whips in House of Cards. Right. <laughs> um, in reality, it's not like that at all. But I'm afraid we did have a succession of people going through the government's whips office that did think that they were Francis Urquhart. Right. And uh, and actually, we you know we 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 just need to reset the behaviours. That one of the difficulties is is that there's there's no one in the current whips office that's had the corporate memory of what happened before the referendum. Uh, so you had. Well, well, lots of Boise folk coming into the Whip's office. And then you had a general election in 2017 that didn't deliver a majority. So the whole business of whipping became a bit more important in terms of getting government's business through. And I just think uh, over the last six years, we've just had the emergence of a to toxic culture. And we need to reset it. Uh, Jackie, just before I, I have a look at what Carolyn's week has been, was like, when did you realise that things were sort of looking untenable for number 10? Because it started off with Sajid Javid and Rishi Sunak, and then it all went a little bit quiet. Uh, everybody was expecting an avalanche of those resignations, particularly from Cabinet, but it wasn't thus. It was an avalanche the next day, and it was from people who, let's be frank, a lot of the general public had never heard of. Well, I guess if you, I mean, you say it took a long time, <laughs> but actually when it happened, it didn't really. I, I, I guess really the writing was on the wall since the leadership ballot, uh, because it, it was really at that point that, you know, some of us were trying to get number 10 to face up to, to these realities. We were looking to cabinet ministers to do it. And, and how does it work, though, that, Jack? Is your phone going nuts? Are you WhatsApping people left, right and centre, trying to plug in your phone before it runs out of juice? How does it work? Well, we, I mean, it's, it's up to us as MPs to tell the government what we think. Mm -hmm. And normally that's through the WIPS office. I think there's been a centralisation of, of power now that so it's now through number 10. But, you know, we, we, tell, we tell other ministers what we think. We make sure that the machinery of government knows how 
about how each of us feel. And then okay. that should give a, give a strong indication as to the extent to which the Prime Minister carries the confidence of the party. He actually ought to have realised he didn't carry the confidence of the party before getting into a membership ballot that saw him very badly wounded, actually. Carolyn, I can imagine that your week was very different. Is there a sense of watching what's happening across the house and rubbing your hands together with glee or do you put that aside? I don't see the point in rubbing your hands with glee because at the end of the day there's a country that needs governing and somebody's got to be responsible for governing it and you know unless we have a general election and change that at this moment in time the Conservative Party hold that responsibility. I think Tuesday night was a little was a little bit like Mm, is it beginning? Is it the beginning of end? You know, is it the end of day stuff? Tuesday came and went and nothing happened. But I will never, ever forget Wednesday and walking out to PMQs. And I actually said at the time, I felt as if I was walking out of the, of the crematorium about to pay my respects to the bereaved families. It was an absolutely awful atmosphere. And my heart was bleeding for people like Jackie, for people who'd actually resigned that morning, for other good Conservatives who were walking out to that chamber in total disbelief at the way that Boris Johnson was behaving. It was painful to watch and it was nothing to rub your hands in glee about because it was so destroying to see. Jackie, what was the atmosphere like for you in the House of Commons, particularly when the former Health Secretary Sajid Javid stood up well, then a pretty eviscerating speech that he gave. Yeah, the interesting thing about that speech, it probably had less impact than it might have done if Boris Johnson had behaved differently during PMQs. Mm. I, 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 Caroline's absolutely right. The authority of the Prime Minister ebbed away in that half hour. Now, um, there has been a lot of talk about a vote of no confidence in the government from Sir Keir Starmer. Carolyn, do you know if Labour are seriously thinking about tabling that vote of no confidence in the government because Boris Johnson has chosen, as is his right to do, we should say, to stay on as caretaker mm -hmm. prime minister until a new Conservative leader is elected? I mean, I know what you, what everybody else knows, and that's what's been said in the media by both the leader and the deputy leader. It looks as if, yes, we are going to table that um, vote of no confidence. Um, I just think the prime minister has an audacity beyond comprehension and he should have gone. He should have been gone by now. We've got a deputy prime minister. He should take the reins for the, what, what's left of this parliamentary sit-in and then the Conservative Party can spend the summer finding a new leader. So my understanding is, yes, that will happen next week. I don't know when, I don't know what day, but my understanding is yes. OK. Jackie, um, what are your thoughts about whether or not Boris Johnson should stay as caretaker Prime Minister for, I think, the 1922 committee are trying to get everything done within eight weeks, take two weeks to narrow it down to the final two, and then six weeks for the membership to return their vote. So it could all be over in a couple of months. Do you think Boris Johnson should stay in number 10 for that time? Or do you yes, agree? Yes, I with do. You do? I do. I mean, I, I think we have to remind ourselves of the constitutional proprieties of this. I mean, the Queen appoints the Prime Minister. Uh, and so the, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson has resigned as leader of the Conservative Party. And when we've elected a new one, the Queen will appoint them as the Prime Minister. Um, you know, he, he is going. I think there's the next two months, you know, there's, the Cabinet have made a very clear uh, undertaking that there'll be no new policy initiatives, you know, in that time, but necessary decisions do need to be made. So someone needs to stay on um, as Prime Minister and, and to occupy that uh, so that we can continue with the business of government. But, I, you know, I don't blame the Labour Party for bringing forward a vote of no confidence. Uh, that's, that is what they're entitled to do. They're there to, to hold us to account. Uh, but, I, you know, I kind of take the view that, you know, the Prime Minister's going for all his faults. Um, he's a talented man and he's been a massive presence on our stage. He's, he's, his, polit his, his career as Prime Minister has ended in a pretty humiliating way. Um, but I, and I don't see any need to be overly vindictive about it. But, you know, in the meantime, the Conservative Party's got to grow up, find a leader that's um, worthy of holding that great office of state and, and leading this country. And, you know, we should, we, we should focus on that rather than, you know, 
rather what was, that was, was what happened over last week. Let, let's uh, get your thoughts before we go uh, on the leadership race. Uh, a lot has been said. We're speaking to Alberto Costa earlier on the top of the show, and he said that integrity has to be the key for the next uh, new Tory leader. So, Jackie, I've got to ask you, can anybody who served alongside Boris Johnson, particularly in his cabinet, the four people we know so far, two of which were from his cabinet, Rishi Sunak and Suella Braverman, who asked for Boris Johnson to step down uh, when she was being interviewed by Robert Peston. She did not tend to her resignation, but she asked for Boris Johnson to step down and threw her name in the ring. Can you have served with Boris Johnson, defended him throughout all the scandals that we've been talking about, and now step forward as a leader that shows unflinching integrity? Um, well, I think you can, but but uh, but obviously I'm only one voter in this, you know, uh, and it's up to all the candidates to convince uh, uh, members of parliament that they do have the integrity, the professionalism, and the leadership skills to, to go forward. And you know, it, there is a tension. If, if you're sitting in government and, you know, you could see that in Sajid Javid's resignation speech that, you know, your conflicts, your conflicts are by uh, a view about the behaviour that actually led to the pro Boris Johnson's removal and your duties of a public servant. Um, you know, and it, it, quite, it takes a long time to wrestle with those before you come to the conclusion you have to leave or demand the Prime Minister to go. So, you know, it will be up to individual ministers to to account for themselves. But ultimately, I don't blame anyone who continued to sit in government, mm -hmm. uh, whatever they thought of the prime minister, uh, because they were focusing on their duties to the public. So, Jackie, who will you be backing? Well, I'm very clear. I'm backing Liz Truss. Um, I we think don't know we... if she's standing just yet. Officially. Well, I think we I think we could expect that she would stand, and I mean, she's currently in the G in Indonesia attending the G20 foreign ministers. That will be clearly at the top of her to do list okay. right at this moment. Okay, Carolyn, uh, I'm not going to ask you who you're backing, but who <laughs> who do you think is most suited <laughs> for Labour's point of view to be stood up oh. against uh, Keir Starmer at that dispatch box, and of course, going into a general election in one or two years' time? Yeah. Um... Do you know, I don't know. I, I'm one who likes to judge people because I know them. I like to get to know people and make my decision based on them. I, I need to knock into the whites of their eyes, if you like, um, Alexis. <laughs> and I don't know all of them. Those who I know, um, I've got opinions on. Those I've never spoken to, I haven't got an opinion on. Mm -hmm.